So in this video, I'm going to use the shortcut method to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So here we have our matrix A. Let's compute the determinant of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at my first two columns of my matrix, and I'm just going to copy those down off to the side. So I've got 2, negative 4, and negative 1. And then I have 1, 5, and negative 3. There are some uh, methods out there that use the third column. They're all equivalent, but I'm not going to use it in mine. Okay, so I've got the first two columns. What I do now is I look at the top row of my matrix. I'm going to touch each entry, so let's look at the two first. And now I'm going to make arrows that go diagonally down and to the right. So there's one little arrow. And now if I look at my next entry, again, I'm going to make an arrow that goes down and to the right. And the same thing, I'll do one more. I'll have one more arrow. So in this case, uh, what I do now is I multiply the numbers uh, along each arrow. So if I look at my first arrow, I've got those numbers 2 and 5 and 6, and we multiply those together. Now I put a plus sign in between when I go to the next arrow. I'll take a 1 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by negative 1, and another plus sign, and now let's go to our our last arrow, so that's going to be the values 3 times negative 4 times negative 3. Squeeze that in there. And now we do the same thing, except we look at the bottom row instead of the top row. And now I go up and to the right. So there's one arrow, there's two arrows, and there's three arrows. So just like before, we multiply those values together. So if I look at my first arrow, that's going to be negative 1, and then times 5, and then times 3 it looks like. So negative 1 times 5 times 3. Now, And this is where we have to be careful, though. We had plus signs for our down arrows. For our up arrows, we're actually going to get negative signs in between. So we'll have a negative sign, a negative sign, and another negative sign. Let's go to our second arrow, again, just multiplying those values. So that's negative 3 multiplied by negative 2 times positive 2. And then we'll do the same thing. Let's multiply those values along that last arrow. Let's see if we can't get those one more time. It looks like 6 times negative 4 times 1. So we have 6 multiplied by negative 4 multiplied by 1. And now it's just arithmetic. So if you have to do these by hand, just be careful at this point. There's a lot of positives and negatives floating around. So let's see if we can't do this. So let's see, our first term, 2 times 5 is 10 times 6. That's 60. Um, it looks like we'll get a positive 2 for our next value. And then I've got a 3 times a negative 4 times a negative 3. That looks like that's going to give me a positive 36. And then let's see, we've got our minus sign. So negative 1 times 5 times 3, that's going to be negative 15. And then my next minus sign right there. So negative 3 times negative 2 times positive 2, that's going to be what? 6 times 2 or 12. And last but not least, my next negative sign. It looks like we're going to get negative 24. And of course, you could be simplifying these negatives and positives as you go. So I've got 60 plus 2 plus 36 plus 15 minus 12 plus 24 is what I'm getting. Okay, so let's see. So 60 plus 2, let's even do, well, you can do it however makes you happy. Um, I would probably do... Uh, 36 and 24, that's going to give me 60, plus another 60 is going to give me 120, plus 2, that's going to be 122, and these next two values, 15 minus 12, that's going to be plus 3, so I'm getting 125 as my determinant. So again, the main idea, just multiply the down arrows, add those together, multiply the up arrows, and just subtract those values away, and that's going to give you the value of your determinant.